Welcome to this week's Archaeology News, where I bring you the latest discoveries from the ancient world. My highlight story is about new research into a fortification built in Siberia by hunter-gatherers. Why were foraging groups building defensive enclosures and pit dwellings more than 8,000 years ago? I then talk about a new study into Paleolithic cave paintings of handprints where one or more fingers are missing. Could this be evidence for ritual amputation? Let's get into it. New study into the northernmost Stone Age fort discovered so far. A couple of videos ago, I talked about how Gobekli Tepe was built by hunter-gatherers and how this turned the prevailing hypothesis that the agricultural revolution created the ideal environment for monumental construction on its head. It seems it was the other way around. A recent paper published in the journal Antiquity discusses new evidence from the fortified site of Amnia in Siberia that was also built by hunter-gatherers but around 8,000 years ago. Once again, this shows that foraging groups had the social and technological complexity to build large-scale sites. Amnia is one of several fortified enclosures in the subarctic Siberian taiga that were constructed from the 7th millennium BCE onwards. A few similar sites also built by forager groups have been found in other parts of the world, but from later dates. In Europe, such enclosures do not appear until around 5000 BCE, and those belonged to agricultural communities rather than hunter-gatherers. Those in western Siberia are some of the the oldest fortified enclosures found so far. The region has a resource-rich ecosystem that would have been particularly attractive to hunter-gatherers. There's an abundance of fish, aquatic birds, forest fowl, and large game, and these can all be used to make products that are easily storable and transportable. Such an ecosystem would have enabled the hunter-gatherer populations to grow, but may also have meant that such products were a target for outsiders, hence the fortified nature of their sites. In Western Siberia, pit houses of different sizes appear at that time, which may indicate a hierarchical society not normally expected of forager groups. Large mounds were also constructed containing hearths, human skulls, and clay figurines, which suggest ritual activity took place in them. These hunter-gatherer communities also started to use pottery in the 7th millennium BCE. Amnia 1 is located on a sandy spit above a river's floodplain in the lower Ob region of the northern Taiga. Above ground features that have survived the millennia include banks and ditches enclosing the promontory and 10 house pit depressions. The site referred to as Amnia 2 is 50 meters to the east and also has 10 house pits. Excavations of Amnia 1 took place between 1987 and 2000. At that time, wooden palisades were discovered, which together with the ditches provide evidence for fortification. The pit houses have rectangular layouts and differ in size covering between 13 and 41 square meters, with the largest pit house sitting at the top of the promontory. They have depths of up to 1.8 meters. Each house has a central elevated fireplace, which may indicate that they were long-term domestic dwellings. However, further research hasn't been able to confirm this. The stratigraphy of the site shows that it was repeatedly destroyed by fire, something that has been found at other enclosures in the region as well. This may be evidence for conflict. 45 pottery vessels have been uncovered from Amnia, which represent two typologies from different time periods. Although, since some houses contained both types of pottery, it's likely that there was overlap in the times each were in use. Quartz and flint artifacts were also recovered from the site. These included tools and weapons. Bone fragments mostly came from elk, reindeer and beaver. In 2019, the site was reassessed with various fieldwork and analyses being carried out. It's the results of these studies that are discussed in the recent paper. 
A topographic survey was conducted which helped with a reassessment of the stratigraphy of the site since samples from secure contacts were required for radiocarbon dating and paleobotanical analyses. This did change the chronology of the site with the new paper suggesting that the fortification was built in the last century of the 7th millennium BCE before occupation began in the 6th millennium. Both sets of pit houses were occupied at the same time. However, one was enclosed by a fortification and the other was an open air village. Previous dating work showed that both Amnia 1 and 2 were reoccupied in the Enolithic in the fourth millennium, and this has not been revised in the new work. Paleoecological and paleoenvironmental analyses indicate that there was a lake to the south of the site and a river to its north. The authors of the paper suggest that defensive constructions were probably driven by intergroup conflict. Such sites first appear in Western Siberia following the period of cooling known as the 8.2 KABP event, which may also be relevant to the discussion. The authors proposed three scenarios to explain the appearance of fortified sites, pit house settlements, ritual mounds and pottery in the 7th millennium BCE. Firstly, that these innovations were the result of economic uncertainty caused by climatic fluctuations such as unstable oxygen levels in water. This meant that technological change was needed for survival. Secondly, that these innovations were the result of an abundance of resources due to the 8.2 Ka event. This meant that storage was needed for surplus products which led to competition and conflict. Thirdly, that these innovations had a different explanation entirely, perhaps being brought in by external groups. The establishment of fortified sites in the north of Eurasia as a symbol of hunter-gatherer territoriality is different to what took place in the Baikal region and northeastern Europe, where it was instead marked by large cemeteries. The authors of the paper conclude with saying that by understanding the Siberian pathway better, further insights into social differentiation and conflict in non-agricultural societies can be gained. New research suggests Paleolithic groups removed fingers in rituals. On more than 200 Paleolithic cave paintings of handprints in France and Spain, a part of a finger, a full finger or several fingers are missing. Over the years, experts have sought to explain this phenomenon. They've said that maybe the missing digits represent medical issues such as frostbite, or maybe they were the result of artistic license. However, a few years ago, several researchers suggested the missing digit paintings may indicate that the fingers had been purposefully amputated for ritual purposes. This hypothesis received criticism by other experts because such a convention would have been impractical for everyday life in Paleolithic Europe. Now, according to The Guardian, one of these researchers, Professor Mark Collard, and PhD candidate Bria McCauley have presented a paper containing new data on this subject at the European Society for Human Evolution. There are two types of handprints in these 25,000 year old cave paintings. Some are imprints made by dipping a hand in pigment and placing it on the cave wall, and others are stencils created by first putting a hand against a wall before painting over it. The team studied the Maltravieso and Fuente del Truco caves in Spain and the Gargas and Cosquer caves in France. All of these caves have examples of handprints with missing fingers. The researchers have also found similar paintings on other continents, so if they were a result of amputation, then the practice must have developed in all these places independently. One of the reasons the authors of the paper think these paintings represent amputations is because several modern-day hunter-gatherer groups do this. For example, the Dani people in New Guinea sometimes cut off fingers when relatives die. Of course, if it was practiced in ancient times, the reason may have been entirely different, such as to placate deities. Collard sees amputation as a more extreme version of practices such as fire walking and putting hooks through the skin, which are part of rituals carried out in various societies today. I don't know. When I first saw these images, I just thought that the hand model had folded down one or two fingers halfway. Like this. I don't know why they have to represent missing digits, but I can't find that many images online, so perhaps that's just the way it looks in the ones I've seen. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. That's it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. I really appreciate having this 
online community that shares my passion for ancient history and mystery. A big thank you goes out to my patrons and channel members for all of your support. If anyone else would like to join this lovely bunch of people, the links are in the description below. I'll see you next time.